Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Corey Sauter Show here at Studio One. I'm Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University. And again this week we'll talk Mustang football with the head coach of the Mustangs, Corey Sauter. We'll look back at SMSU's 28-24 victory over Northern State University. We'll take a look at some of the highlights and we'll also preview this week's game at the University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota as the Mustangs open up conference play. And joining us, as always, on the show is the head coach of the Mustangs, Corey Sauter. And we have lots to talk about this week. Of course, a Mustang victory, as you mentioned, 28-24 over Northern State. And we'll see some highlights later on in the show. But, Coach, overall, your thoughts now? You've had about four or five days to watch the film and you know take in that first win. It's always fun, especially for the first-year head coach to get that first win out of the way. Your thoughts on uh, Thursday night's game against Northern State? Well, like you said, it's, it's always nice to win. Uh, winning is tough mm -hmm. and uh, there is no easy wins in this in this league and um, I'm definitely excited to get the first one out of the way because uh, um, I definitely want to have to wait a couple yeah. weeks to make that happen. But I'm excited about our players, the way they came out and, and played. It was a closer game than uh, we, we liked the, the game of Ben, but uh, for the most part, the, the guys were ready to play and, and executed for the most part. Yeah, Mustangs uh, jump out to a 14 nothing halftime lead, led 21-0 in the third quarter, and a big play by Northern State got them back into the contest and, and made it a four-point game in the fourth quarter. You guys put together a, a big-time drive to, to kind of not seal the victory, but you go up by a, a two-score margin uh, with the, the big uh, drive, 76 yards, took over eight minutes off the clock. But And we'll talk more about that play later on, that drive here in the show. But, uh, again, uh, your thoughts of the guys uh, coming out to where they – nervous or excited or, or just uh, you know you thought you prepared them pro properly and they're ready to go well you, you never know going into that week how how the guys are going to respond when the game's on the mm -hmm. line when the bullets are flying and uh, you know for the most part they um, were very calm um, I could tell before the game that they were focused ready to go um, you know the whole Ben Bundy <coughs> flag um, in, you know, before the game yeah. was an emotional uh, thing for them. And so they, I think they're ready to play. It's just a matter of, okay, finally going out and executing. And uh, um, like you said, we, we started out a little bit slow on offense. Uh, we had uh, a few uh, shorter drives that, that we'd like to stay on the field a little bit longer. Um, but that's how it's going to be for the for the you know most times on a first game, um, just trying to feel out what they're trying to do on defense. And they had a few things that uh, took away some of our uh, short passing game, so we had to make some changes as as we went along. Yeah, of course, uh, both teams kind of feeling each other out for the opening quarter. And in that first quarter, Northern State had a nice drive put together. Defense uh, stopped the Wolves and forced a field goal attempt, a bad snap, or right through the holder's hands. That was a big stop, a momentum change. And you guys took advantage of that and finally got that big play, and it led to a touchdown drive and a Ryan Radican uh, hitting Lester Lewis for a touchdown. And I think once that first score got on the board, the Mustangs got the lead, uh, the offense started to click and, and it really rolled in the second quarter. Right, and, and once you finally get in the end zone, I think it's a, kind of a collective sigh of relief yep. for everybody, knowing that, okay, we, we've got some points, let's build off of that now. And um, But it, it was a great play, you know, no doubt about it. And uh, uh, like we talked about last week, you know, Lester Lewis came along uh, during training camp, mm -hmm. and we decided to make that move uh, a couple days before our first game. And, um, you know, he came out and proved himself uh, with that big play. Yeah, Lester Lewis, a couple of touchdowns in the first half, had a, another long uh, reception also in the contest. Mustangs took that 14-0 lead into the halftime break. You score in the third quarter to go up 21-0. And, and as you mentioned, that play of the game, you, maybe if you get a three and out there by your defense, uh, uh, the game could have maybe become a blowout. But you give Northern State credit, they made a play and it meant it 21-7. And probably good for that first game. It gave your guys some adversity. Uh, the Wolves came back into it, and uh, but you didn't see any panic in your guys' uh, eyes or anything because in that fourth quarter and the drive that you needed, you stepped up. Your thoughts there when Northern made their run? Well, you got to give them a lot of credit because uh, I think uh, teams in the past uh, may have quit 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know Coach Dosh did a nice job as far as getting their attention at halftime. Uh, we knew that going in, um, you know, into the second half, that they were going to have their backs against the wall, and we're going to be fighting pretty hard to get back in the ball game. So um, our guys never looked at the scoreboard. We never flinched as far as trying to panic or do anything different. Uh, our guys really trusted each other and our game plan, and. Uh, for the most part, they were able to execute when the game was on the line. Like you said, um, to have a little bit of adversity there in that first game can only help us, you know, down the road. And um, you know, when you have a blowout win, you know, things, t you know, tend mm -hmm. to turn into a little bit more of a complacent type attitude. And, and hopefully, that got our attention you know, here going into our second game. Well, the uh, Northern State Wolves had a long field goal uh, in the third quarter. Uh, early in the fourth quarter to make it 21 to 17 and the Mustangs put together an eight minute drive uh, just running the football you picked up some big third downs and uh, kind of what I was alluding to and you touched on it it was just the way that uh, you had to face some adversity and, and do some things to pick up third downs it wasn't just a blowout <coughs> victory and uh, big third down conversions uh, in that drive to keep it alive. Cat by the Gannon Moore touchdown, and you're up 28-17 again. But uh, uh, talk about those big third down plays because uh, that that is the key to, a, to, to winning yeah, football games right. is converting those. Yeah. What are your your goals, I guess, for each game on third down conversions? Because we hear so much of the media talking about third down conversions and yeah. team goals. But what do you guys look for each game? Well, you know, offensively, that's that's the key. You, know, you want to stay on the field, and if you don't convert, you're, you're off the field, you're punting, you're giving the other team the ball. And so uh, our goal is to, to try to convert about 45% of the time. And um, the key of that to that statistic is really first and second down, making sure we're getting three to four yards uh, to make that third down very manageable and make it a um, a two-way go as far as us on offense, you know, the ability to run or pass. And so um, I, I think our guys allowed us to get in those, you know, shorter yardage situations, allowed you to uh, take some shots at times and not just be predictable. Um, so the more we can be successful on first down uh, and not waste those first two downs uh, within a series, um, you know, it's going to really help us out in the long run. And and when it's third down, it's you know you got to you got to have you got to make the play. And uh, we had some big ones. You know, Ladegi uh, came up big. We had Valentine. You know, so um, those are seniors, guys that we trust and and uh, can depend upon. And um, you know. You, you know, you're in that situation. You you want a bunch of guys on the field that want the ball in their hands. Well, the Mustangs uh, definitely uh, had uh, guys step up and make some plays in that uh, season opening victory. Quarterback Ryan Radikin, 21 of 30, had just nine uh, balls that did not go to his receivers, uh, but did have three interceptions, and we'll talk about those here shortly. But had three touchdowns in the contest. Uh, Lester Lewis, a career day, seven receptions, 156 yards and a couple of touchdowns, so a great day for him. And Brett Ballantyne, also a 100-yard day, receiving 110 yards and five catches for SMSU. The rushing attack, pretty balanced. Gannon Moore, 75 yards and a touchdown. And Warren Matthews, 72 yards on the ground on 12 carries. And your thoughts, we'll go back to your senior quarterback. Uh, had a pretty good game, made some very nice throws. Had a couple of throws maybe. I'm sure you've talked to him already watching the film. And, you know, it's just, I suppose, looking at the right guy that you need to pass to and, and making the right decisions on, on some of those passes. <coughs> but uh, your thoughts of uh, Ryan's day at quarterback? Well, you know, he had a pretty solid day as far as completion percentage, touchdowns, and produ production overall. Um, those three interceptions, um, that's the number we want to obviously uh, eliminate or reduce. And uh, I know in the first interception, we had a, a great play lined up, and it would have been a walk-in touchdown if we had just left the thing on. He ended up audible in um, the routes on the other side. So uh, instead of you know tinkering with, with the play, if he just left it on, he would have been in great shape and we would have scored there. Um, the second one, um, he ended up, they just made a really good play on defense, I thought. And then the, the last one, he just made a poor decision. So, um, you know, you're going to have throws that, that are going to be not on target, but it's the decision ones that we want to try to eliminate uh, in the end. Sometimes they're going to cover things and, and nothing's going to be there, and that's fine. You know, the, the, the main thing is we're throwing the ball away and giving ourselves another, another opportunity. 
Of course, we talked about the running attack in and more. Warren Matthews both having very <clears throat> solid days in the receiving core. But uh, another balance attack by the, a lot of different guys catching passes. Shane Ladega, who's one of the best tight ends in the conference, can block, but also can catch the ball. He had five catches. You see Calvin Kosmiskis make a couple of catches, and yeah. you also have Gannon Moore and Warren Matthews out of the backfield. I mean, we're going to see not only stretching the ball downfield, but uh, to go underneath to find the tight end and fullbacks, and, and that, those can be very successful plays. Absolutely, and and you know when you when you lose some of your bigger playmakers that we had last year, we're going to have to be a little more creative as far as getting the ball distributed to other guys, and um, you know whether it's a, a an underneath throw and, and getting ten yards after the catch, so be it. But um, you know it's really a, a collective uh, unit mm -hmm. when we look at it. We're not going to predetermine who we're going to go to. You know coverage will dictate uh, as far as what receiver we're going to actually throw to. Um, but we've got some nice concepts, we're trying to put pressure on defenses as far as a little more play action. Um, that, you know, that's something that we haven't done as much in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been primarily just a drop back passing team. Where now we're, we've got two good running backs that we can work off of and, and get some nice action off of that. And not only with that, but they themselves will get the ball as well, you know, um, after the fake. Well, the offense did a very good job of putting up some big numbers in the defensive side of the football. <coughs> Also a very good day by the Mustang defense, uh, limiting Northern State to just over 300 yards. And they got uh, almost half of those on just two plays on a, a long pass and a, and a long rushing touchdown. But uh, overall, your thoughts of the defense really played well. And the defensive line had some big numbers. And Nick DeCaniva, at linebacker, nine tackles, a game high, also had a tackle for loss. But uh, overall, your thoughts, because a lot of new players and it's some new positions and really played well and gave Northern some fits, especially in that first half, uh, shutting out Northern. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that first half, you know, coming out, not, you know, you're kind of at the disadvantage when you're playing defense in a first game because you just don't know mm -hmm. what you're going to get. And uh, I thought Coach Gunther did a nice job as far as preparing them for all the different looks that they're going to see. Um, and, they, and they play well. You know, they're playing uh, assignment football, understanding their, their, what, what areas of the field they need to cover, what gaps they need to be responsible for. And uh, for the most part, everyone played well together and, and uh, really gave them a, t a tough time as far as getting down the field. And, um, you know, like you said, there was only a handful of plays mm -hmm. that you like to get back. And uh, obviously you go back and you know, look at those and try to make those corrections. And hopefully we don't repeat those things here in the future. And the defensive line, Mark Schulmeyer uh, and Rob Slinkman both uh, combined for 11 tackles and a tackle for loss. And, uh, Slinkman was named your defensive player of the week for your your squad, and, and those guys are, you know, Rob's a, a fifth year senior. He's had a lot of snaps on the defensive side, and and he made some plays. And Schulmeyer, a sophomore, played a lot last year as well. And those two guys are you kind of your bookends there on that defensive line, and along with Randy Erickson, and uh, without a starter and Logan Van Dyke who missed a game with an injury, you needed that to stop a pretty good rushing attack. Montreal Richardson, a, a very speedy running back for Northern State. Right, and you, you take a look at any defense, you know, that's really the foundation of any. defense defense, uh, that front three or front four, um, and, and you have to be able to rush the pass or you have to be able to contain your gaps. Um, if you do that, good things are going to happen on the back end. And, and if you struggle up front, uh, it's going to be a long day. You know, nothing worse than uh, being on the field knowing that you can't stop the run, knowing that you can't get a big play. And uh, like you said, the, the two outside guys did a phenomenal job as far as putting pressure, making plays. You know, even if it wasn't a play for a loss, uh, keeping things to a very mm -hmm. minimal gain. Well, the Mustangs uh, get the victory 28-24, a very solid effort all around for the Mustangs. Uh, uh, special teams, defense, and on the offensive side as uh, SMU, M SMSU jumped out to a 14-0 halftime lead, led 21-0 in the third quarter. Northern made it a 21-17 game, but SMSU scored the uh, final touchdown uh, for the Mustangs at 28-17 with two and a half minutes to go, and Northern did score late to get to within four, but the onside kick went out of bounds, and uh, the Mustangs ran out the clock to pick up the victory and improve to 1-0 on the season. We'll now take a look at some of the highlights from last Thursday night's game versus Northern State University and it was a exciting game at the Regional Event Center. We start off with the defense and we just talked about Mark Schulmeyer and Randy Erickson and those guys here make a play uh, early on in the first quarter. Well you can see here you know 
Defensively, you know, we always talk from day one is getting guys to swarm to the football, and that's what we talk about all the time. Um, both Mark and uh, Randy here just do a nice job as far as getting off blocks, making a play, you know, essentially in the backfield and, and very minimal gain. Again, Schulmeyer had six tackles, uh, ranking second on the team, and he steps up here for another tackle here in a short game and and, and uh, really showing his ability to get out to the outside. Yeah, and the nice thing, too, is you, you see his, his ability to redirect. You know, they're just throwing a little screen out to the flat, and he just redirects and makes a play for about a two-yard gain. Yeah, it's a very excellent play. We continue on on the defensive side. Joe Stupka, four tackles for the Mustangs, number 13, and he'll step up and uh, make a play here on second down. Okay, Joe's coming down inside, uh, playing zone coverage. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. Uh, he sees the underneath the you know, receiver coming in and uh, just definitely wraps him up and, and keeps, again, keeps everything in front of us. Uh, and for a first game, this is pretty impressive because we haven't been, really been tackling at all, and, and we didn't see too many missed tackles uh, in the day. There's Kurt Gosser with a sack. Mustangs had one on the night. and. This is a big one here as the Wolves drive down to the Mustangs' 37-yard uh, line. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gosser here came off the uh, off the boundary edge uh, on a corner blitz, and you see this a lot of times. Teams will will bring a corner blitz to the the quarterback's blind side, to especially to the short side of the field. And uh, again, they don't account for him. And he, again, he has to finish it with by wrapping the guy up. And uh, big play in the ball game. So the Mustangs. Uh, do it well on defense, and now we go to the offensive side, and a big catch. Brett Ballantyne yep. here for a 47-yard reception. We ran a few play-action uh, plays earlier in the game. We set this one up. Um, they were starting to get a little aggressive as far as getting our fullback and, and our outside wide receiver. Uh, we were able to play action and get Brett uh, down the middle of the field, uh, which was nice to see. Our offensive line did a nice job as far as sliding, keeping their gap uh, protected, and then the back blocking off the edge, and we got Ballantyne going right down the middle. Again, Ballantyne, five catches, 110 yards in the game. That one at 47-yard. We continue on now into the second quarter. Mustangs and the Wolves still scoreless, and Rob Slinkman a tackle for loss. Again, there's that defensive line pressure, and a senior making a play. Right. And, you know, couldn't be more proud of, of Slink. You know, he's he's had a great offseason. He's worked hard. He's been here all summer. And uh, we're really starting to see the, the benefits of, of all of his workouts uh, this this past offseason. He's on the right side uh, of the screen, just fights through a couple yep. of blocks and uh, a big tackle for loss uh, for Rob Slink. We go back to the offensive side. Here's the touchdown, the first of the season. A great catch. Bottom of your screen, Lester Lewis, a one-handed grab. Yep, and Lester, you know, this is kind of where he makes his money, you know, down here in the red zone. He's a big body, uh, strong. He's a, a guy that can bench over 300 pounds. You know, he, so he's a, a physical specimen down here, and um, the main thing is just putting the ball in, a, in an area where he can make a play, and nine times out of ten, he's going to come up with a big play for you. And Lester, we might not see it on this one, but... Fake to the inside and then uh, right to the corner of the end zone. And Ryan Radican had plenty of time yep. to throw that little fake and uh, yep. got the touchdown. Yep. Ryan did a nice job with the pump fake and give him give that uh, receiver a good opportunity to catch the football. And we continue on later on in the quarter. Lester is on the uh, left side, top of your screen. He'll go a slant and a great throw from Radican. Yep, and again, it all starts with protection. we got great Great time to throw that, and, and Lester, uh, again, puts that defender in a pretty tough situation. A lot of field to cover, and again, we're going to make plays once we get down inside the 20. Um, and, and Ryan, again, puts it on the, on the numbers, and, and uh, Lester goes ahead and, and finishes the drive. So that made the score 14-0. Uh, uh, we continue on now to the third quarter. And uh, Lester Lewis, this one a huge drive. You started going one yard line yeah. and almost another touchdown for Lester, but a huge play it's on this It's never drive. fun starting on your one yard line, but we were able to get out of it. Um, again, we've got a, basically a stutter go on this play. Uh, Ryan gives him an opportunity to catch the football. Now, Lester did get uh, a lot of heat for getting caught <laughs> from behind by a lot of his teammates here in, in film sessions, but um, you know we're just happy to, to get the completion and, and get the ball down the field. 79 yards was the official uh, mark on this, but uh, great drive for the Mustangs. They cap it off. Uh, it was a 99-yard drive, a three-yard touchdown pass uh, was the uh, final 
uh, dr touched on on this one, and uh, and that comes up right here with uh, Shane Ladegi. But uh, the guys are excited, and you got to you're going to have this long drive. You got to punch it in and yeah. you get it right here. We ran a, a run play on the first play, and we set it up by getting a play action on the second play. Once we got down here in the in the goal line situation, and and Shane did a phenomenal job as far as getting to that back pylon. Ryan does a nice job as far as a, a good play action fake, get a good line sell up front, and he puts it where only Shane can get it or nobody. Great catch, 21 nothing Mustangs lead. Go back to the defensive side, and a guy that hasn't played a lot in his collegiate career, but Ben Peterson on the defensive line uh, does what he has to do here in this third quarter and gets a big tackle for loss, uh, pitting Northern State deep in their own end. And we always talk about, you know, guys need to step up, guys that don't play maybe as much or haven't gotten as many snaps in the, in the past, step up, and that's what Ben does here. He makes a nice play um, for, for a loss and, and really gets us some momentum. We continue on now to the fourth quarter. I mentioned Nick DiCaniva led the team with nine tackles, and here picks up his tackle for loss. Nice thing about DiCaniva is his ability to run, you know, and you can't, coach that he's he's got uh, great physical attributes he can move around he's tough to he gets off blocks and, and makes big plays w when they need to be made he's number 33 here in the, in middle, the middle and read it and uh, gets the tackle and a short gain or minus gain there for the Wolves now in the fourth quarter Mustangs a big drive the eight minute drive capped off by the Gannon Moore touchdown and we finally give it to the big horse down here inside the the ten yard line, and uh, I tell you what, that was a pretty pretty large hole to to run through. And and uh, again, it's tough to bring down. You know, if you give him that much space, he's he's going to break most tackles in that situation. That made the score 28-17 in favor of uh, the Mustangs, and the Wolves had one last chance to cut into that lead. And uh, here's a couple of defensive stops here. Nick DiCaniva putting some pressure on uh, Joey Fiegler, the and Northern you, State quarterback. And you love being in this situation if you're defense, knowing in your passing situation, you can go ahead and uh, pull your ears back and just go. And, uh, th and we were able to do that and, um, you know, not have to bring a lot of people. We only have a three-man rush on this play, and uh, Deke does a nice job as far as getting in the quarterback's face and creating a throwaway. Oh, it was a tough play for a quarterback. That's yep. a lot of momentum uh, landing on top of yep. him. And Robbie Slinkman and Randy Erickson in the defensive line put another <coughs> pressure here. A couple times almost got to Fiegler on their first few plays. Right, right, and it's tough. If you're a quarterback and you guys have guys right down your throat, it's tough making throws down the field. Uh, again, we don't have to bring you know, an all-out blitz. We only have a three-man pressure here, a lot of twisting and, and getting in his face, so it was nice to see. Mustangs did not have a turnover in the contest, but nearly had one here. John Kersberg would love to have this one back. Number eight, uh, could have had a pick that would have sealed the victory, maybe even gone uh, the other way for a touchdown. Yeah, and, and that's what they always say. That's why they play defense, right? Yeah. So <laughs> let their hands stay on defense, yeah. and that uh, is our final uh, highlight of uh, the night, but the Mustangs... Uh, do give up a score there. The Wolves then uh, kick the extra point to make a 28-24. But as you mentioned, the onside kick was uh, went out of bounds, and the Mustangs win the game 28-24. And we talked earlier about Rob Slinkman being named the uh, defensive player of the game for the Mustangs uh, and their coaching staff. Offense was Lester Lewis, and the special teams was freshman Mike Wink, the Mustang place kicker um, and also punter during the game as well. And let's talk about... Uh, you know, what happens after the game, how you make those decisions. And it's a little bit different week because you had a longer time now to prepare for the University of Mary. But when the game ends, it's hardly over for you and your coaching staff. You have a lot of grades, grading of film to watch and deciding to who's your players of the week, who played well, who struggled. And then you meet with the guys as well, correct? Right. Uh, so you would think they would have some time off. <laughs> and we actually met the next day with the players. We watch, uh, we watch the film as a staff and we grade every single player, every single play. And uh, you know, once we do that, then we actually meet with the players and watch the film with them and go over the corrections. And like you said, the nice thing is, is we had a lot of a lot of little things that we had to correct uh, for us to move forward this season. And um, the guys were very receptive as far as criticism with, with their their play. And um, we always say, don't take it personally. We want it, we want you to become a better football player. It's not because we don't like you. It's, yeah. We want you to get better. Um, so we had a great Friday meeting. Uh, Saturday, they had off. 
uh, and then Sunday we, uh, we ended up meeting or actually practicing yep. again and uh, so we're trying to get a little bit of a head start on Mary and uh, you know they're going to be a great opponent on the road and um, so we've got our work cut out for us and, and again today our coaching staff is, is going full throttle as far as getting uh, per, our guys prepared uh, for the upcoming game. And usually during a, when it's a Saturday game to a next Saturday game you will meet on Sunday and have film and then Monday is the day off where it, you probably don't even want to see the guys. Let them yep. get their school work going yep. and get their week off to uh, on the right foot for for their uh, for their classwork. Yep, and it's it's part of the. Um you know, requirements in the NCAA, they they need one full day off, or that we don't have any contact with them as far as meetings, lifting, all that stuff. So um, that's kind of their day to get a head start uh, in the classroom, and um, you know allows us as coaches to really get a good start too. We don't have to worry about meeting with them during that day, and um, you know we sp essentially spend a whole day. Um, you know, game planning and, and getting ready for that upcoming game. Well, before we look ahead to the University of Mary game, we should talk about uh, some of the guys that made some major impacts uh, for the Mustangs in their win against Northern State. You were out with already uh, Brian Villar on the offensive line. During the early stages of the game, uh, John Brinkman goes down, you starting center. Ryan Burke comes in, he's a senior. Uh, he played a little bit last year at center as a backup, and mainly as used as your long snapper. He came in and uh, did a very good job uh, to help you kind of quarterback that offensive line when there's a lot of new players, including right to his left, a redshirt freshman making his first ever uh, start uh, right. at left guard. But uh, talk about the, the play that Ryan made and then look ahead to maybe what, how Brinkman's doing and if Brian Bellar will be back in the lineup. Well, you know, Ryan Burke is a senior, and, and he brings us some some uh, leadership at that position. He's he's not the biggest guy, but he is definitely strong. He's he's got some ability, um, but the key of offensive line play is having all those guys play well together and it really starts at center because it takes a lot of a lot of communication and getting everybody all five of those guys uh, doing the right thing and 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 uh, mr burke is a extremely intelligent guy he can he can figure that part mm -hmm. of it out and so yeah he filled in a phenomenal job uh, with that as far as Bilar, he is uh, he was out there at practice he um, he may be ready for this mm -hmm. upcoming game. Um, I wouldn't doubt uh, that he'd be suiting up for this this game against Mary. Um, you know, and, and so we're we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes. Um, Brinkman had an MRI. We're waiting on the results of that mm -hmm. MRI. So. Um, Talking with him, he felt like possibly Bemidji, he would be ready to yeah. go. Yeah, let's cross our fingers on that. And we go to the defensive side, and uh, a guy that we should touch on, he started at cornerback, Kevin Wagner. Missed all last season with an injury. He's a back for his sixth year for the Mustangs, one of the old guys on the squad. But yeah. Kevin played very well in his first game action in a couple years. Yeah, and it's it's nice to see. He, uh, he did a nice job. He came in and filled in. And, um, you know, if you don't notice a corner, that's yeah. probably a good thing. And uh, so I, I felt very, very confident, again, having another senior, yeah. you know, and we have a bunch of them, you know, in our, in our squad. And um, those guys, you know, pretty much go um, bring our team together, not just at their position, but within their units. Well, the Mustangs uh, get the season off on the right foot with a non-conference victory over Northern State. Now the 10-game conference schedule will start up on Saturday. The Mustangs on the road in Bismarck, North Dakota, taking on the University of Mary. It's a 2.30 kickoff at the Community Bowl in Bismarck. And the Marauders, a team that's 0-1, they lost to Shadron State 35-3 in their uh, season opener a couple of weeks ago. But they'll have two weeks to prepare now for the Mustangs. They'll get their starting tailback, uh, Jamal Lomax, who's 500 yards away from their all-time rushing record. A very good player. He did not play in their opener, so you know he's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with for the Marauders. And they're at home. They'll be excited to uh, talk about the game on Saturday. Well, Mary's got a lot to play for. You know, anytime you start the season 0-1, you know, they're going to be chomping at the bit to get back to on a winning track. And um, it's going to be our first game on the road, how we respond to adversity, how we respond to uh, just the logistics of, of going on the road and, and playing and staying in a hotel and all that and, and staying mm -hmm. focused. Um, so it, it's going to be a great game. You know, they were five and six last year. We were five and six last year. I think we're very similar teams. Uh, it's really going to come down to the team that, that comes out and executes, you know, because I think we're talent-wise very similar to what they are, and, and it really comes down to playing the ball game and, 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 and playing between the lines. It should be an exciting one. Again, the Mustangs and the University of Mary, 2.30 kickoff on Saturday, September 11th in Bismarck. The Mustangs will return home 
for a Saturday night game on September 18th versus Bemidji State. It'll be smoke fest. Should be a great weekend at the Regional Event Center. For the head coach, Corey Sauter, I'm Kelly Loft. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Corey Sauter Show here at Studio One. Go Mustangs!